Personally, sure. I, not too much pressure, Evan, but I said I could put you in the lineup right now at the major league level, and I was shouted down by Chris Young, and he told me to leave the clubhouse. <laughs> so that might be why we didn't get to talk to you. I, I, I know you've addressed this in the past, but for our listening audience, I was reading some of your answers about this, and I thought they were really great, is you talked about everything looks great now, but you talked about your draft day experience and how the people on MLB network were either didn't know who you were or the one person who did kind of dumped on you and said, you're a guy that should have gone to college. How did that impact what would normally be, and hopefully still was one of the greatest days of your life? Yeah. So, you know, I was, I was thankful and uh, thankful to have people around me that still made it a great day. I mean, my family was there and uh, my now wife's family was there and some of our friends. So it was, it was still really fun. Um, you know, just turn off the TV and celebrate with the people who uh, have been there with you and, you know, care about you. So it, it was still a great day. So you didn't make a list of those people <laughs> and you want to send them your stats and <laughs> everything like that. Is no, 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 no. Okay. Evan, also part of your story from what I understand and, and help me out here if I'm wrong is you weren't a huge, let's say, select baseball player when you were in, in high school or grade school. And that is a huge deal in Dallas-Fort Worth. I have two boys of my own. Can you explain that being part of kind of your upbringing that maybe you weren't traveling around the country with perfect game and stuff like that? And that might have been one of the reasons that people didn't uh, know your name as well. Yes. I mean, obviously that stuff's really expensive, um, takes up a whole lot of time. You know, I, you're in school, you're trying to do other things and it's, it's just hard to, it turns into a, you know, a year round thing. And, um, we just, I didn't feel like that I really needed that, I guess. And my parents didn't either, as far as just spending that kind of money and that amount of time put forth, especially for them where, you know, they've got jobs and places that they need to be at home too. So, um, and it, you know, it worked out in the end and two also, I mean, when I was, you know, at the beginning of high school, at least, I didn't necessarily think baseball was the uh, end-all, be-all for me. You know, and I was all in on school and uh, hit a big, I guess, huge jump for me, like junior year or so, and then it started getting a little bit more serious, I guess, after that. Uh, Evan Carter joining us right now on the KNC Masterpiece Hall 105.3 The Fan. You're home of the Texas Rangers. I heard he just drew another walk. Oh, like, probably. Even <laughs> during this interview, I heard he drew another walk. All right, so <laughs> self-scouting is very important. Can you, for our listeners and for anybody that shows up to see you, what what are they seeing whenever they see you play on the field? What are your strengths? Um, I, I guess walks is what it sounds like. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I walks and I'm always going to, you know, Defense is something I take a lot of pride in, um, work at it a lot. So I guess, you know, I'm going to do my best to have a quality at bat and play the best kind of defense I can, back up the pitcher as best as I can because they're out there, you know, busting it for us. So I'm going to have to return it back to them. And that's really interesting, too, because, Kevin, we had Matt Hicks on the other day, and yeah. he was talking about how fluid Evan looks in the in the outfield, how easy he makes it look. Like, is, is that just your practice, or have you always been a naturally good outfielder? Um, so I guess, I mean, obviously there's a lot of work goes into it. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that I don't put in a lot of work in the outfield. I mean, you know, there's a, that's, that's something, like I said, I take a lot of pride in and do a lot of practice with, but also too, I mean, it's, I treat it almost like a football game. You know, you see the ball go up and just go get it. So, I mean, I don't really try and make it too complicated, but, uh, yeah, I, I definitely put a lot of work into it too. Evan, my first big league spring training, I was excited and nervous being in there with major leaguers. I was wondering, this being kind of your first big league spring training, what has it been like from the standpoint of being 20 years old with a whole bunch of pretty big time major leaguers now in that Rangers clubhouse? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been really cool. Um, they, they did a great job as far as making me feel welcome. Um, I was nervous before I got here, um, but as soon as I got here, they made me, you know, they brought me right in. Everybody says hello, and everybody is talkative and makes you feel like you're, you know, you're part of the team. So it's been really good, and uh, kudos to them, you know, for making me feel that way. So it's been a great experience. So one of the guys that took me on was actually Jack Leiter's father, Al Leiter, okay. made me feel welcome, and he was uh, much older than I was at the time, probably about 10 years older. Is there maybe a guy that's a little bit older than you that you find kind of you're gravitating to because they're trying to help you and teach you? Yeah, so I definitely think like Brad Miller would be somebody like that for me. Um, he's one of the first people to talk to me um, when I got here, you know, and it's He's always saying hello, always got a smile on his face, man. So he's he's got a lot of good knowledge, is 
on and off the field uh, for me. So it's been really good, you know, getting to know him and listen to what he has to say. Do you know Brad Miller's bamboo stories? Have you heard about this? I have not heard those stories. Evidently, we're here to help. Bamboo is, yeah, we are always here to help, Evan. Uh, <laughs> bamboo is a big deal for like luck to have to have bamboo mm-hmm. around. So whenever he feels like it's time for the clubhouse to get some luck, he'll bring in some bamboo into the clubhouse. Your thoughts on bamboo? <laughs> I, I've never heard that, you know. I mean, crap. I, if he if brings good luck, I'd, I'd have it everywhere. I didn't know that. <laughs> Surely that's the first time you've ever been asked, what are your thoughts about bamboo, right? Listen, I think that would have to be a first for me, yeah. Uh, KNC, the, third, the show of first. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> one of the things I was reading about when you were, you know, obviously moving up level to level and now being in spring training with a big club is the idea that baseball is baseball. Can you kind of expand just a little bit more on like what that means to you? Yeah, so I mean, I the rules don't change, the game's the same. I mean, everything's everything's the same as you move up. I mean, nothing changes. Um, I just try and treat it that way, you know. I mean, the only thing that's changing is the people who you're playing with or against. And obviously, the higher up you go, the more advanced it gets. But I try and treat it as you know, hey, the game's not changing. It's just the people I'm playing with. So I guess that would kind of be my mindset going into things. I just try not to let the moment get too big or anything like that. You know, you just rise up to the occasion because you are playing better competition, but you know, you're getting better too as you get older and move along too. So just trying to keep that, I guess, in the back of my head. Rangers prospect Evan Carter joining us right now. Evan, I got to watch quite a bit of the Frisco Rough Riders championship run last year, and you got brought up for, uh, I believe, six games before the postseason started, and you had a great postseason uh, winning the double A championship. How much, I don't know if nervous is the right word, playing in kind of a championship double A environment after having a great year in A ball or just exciting was it getting to that level and then also in a short amount of time doing well there? Yeah, I mean, it was awesome. I mean, you know, it was kind of the same story as it is now. You know, all the people there, they had a great culture going on and they, you know, they welcomed me right in. So, I mean, everybody was super, everybody was really nice to me and, uh, man, they just made it, I felt like I was part of the team as soon as I got there. So, I mean, you know, it was great on them, but as far as being in the playoffs, man, that's, there's nothing like it. I mean, everybody, that's the end goal, man. You just, you want to win. And we did that year. So it was, it was really cool to experience that. Now the word on the street or in the clubhouse is that you like classic rock. I am curious, and this is going to make us all feel old. What, what do you count as classic rock? Oh, please. (laughs) Um, I, I, I'm really big into the seventies and the eighties. So, I mean, I, I guess that's considered classic rock. I guess you all would consider that too. Yes, we would. I feel better with that answer. If you would have said like the two thousands out of the, like, <laughs> my no, goodness, no, no, no. Foo Fighters, that's classic rock right there. And you're like, no, <laughs> that's my childhood. No, no. I, I'm really big. I think one of my favorite bands would be like Leonard Skinner. I, I really like them. There we go. Okay. Tuesday's gone. Because he's simple a simple kind, kind of man. man. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> what What else would you throw in? And I want to see if these guys can work that into their next question. What would be some of your other top classic rock bands? Um, I Let's see. I've been to a Doobie Brothers concert. What? Um, Hall and Oates. Um, <laughs> Leonard Skinner. I don't know if Journey is classic rock, but I yeah. really like Journey. Um, I mean, I just Jimmy Buffett. I, that's he's his own category, but I really like Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> Hold on, Mike. You like you came in for Peace Athon yeah. singing all Hall and Oates songs. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. every year, like every year, smile. Evan, we do uh, we do a, a charity uh, radio thon. So we do 14, mm-hmm. 15 hours of radio, and Mike started at five thirty in the morning singing Hall and Oates songs. Is that a great way to start go. your day? That's outstanding. Yeah, it's great. See. It's great. Now we we did get a chance to see you swing, and Mike and I were kind of discussing your swing. It's so it's so smooth. It's really fluid. Palmero is not, not a great good. example, but Palmero probably had Mike for us like, like the smoothest swing. Evan, being a, a guy who watched you, I was, I was telling Corey, I was like, you know, it doesn't look like he's swinging the bat hard. It right. almost looks like a contact swing, but the ball really jumps off of your bat. So that's a, a big compliment from us, but. I'm sure. I'm assuming you feel like you're swinging the bat as hard as you can. Listen, I mean, I I look at the videos same as you all do. I'll see myself. I'm like, man, like I am not. I need to swing the bat harder. And then as soon as I try and swing the bat harder, everything gets worse, and I hit the ball not as hard. It, it's 
I couldn't explain it to you, but I, I, I see what y'all are talking about for sure. <laughs> is there, is there, was there anybody that you like tried to emulate when you were growing up? Did you ever have a Mickey Tettleton pose or a Griffey? What was your, who was the one you were trying to look like? Um, honestly, probably for me, it'd be like Christian Yelich in high school. Um, I really liked his swing, um, but I, I've never really emulated anybody's swings, I guess. I've just kind of done my own thing. Um, but as far as watching people, what they do, Christian Yelich was a big one for me. See, we avoided the oldness with the classic rock, but mm -hmm. when you say that you grew up emulating Christian Yelich, that throws us right back into the old category. Ah, but I, I appreciate your honesty right there. I really do. No, it's okay. Now, well, Kevin, Duke almost had him. The, oh, yeah, Blue Devil. Yeah, he was, uh, he was in the... Kevin also oh. was was uh, admitted to Duke. Yeah. And uh, and I'm presuming that, like, the the whole, like, Coach K was retiring thing really kind of let you down then, Evan? <laughs> oh, yeah, that was the whole... That was definitely the whole reason. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with baseball. Really cool. we got to go, yeah, we got to go to some of their basketball games, for sure. That's an awesome environment. Did you, I have been to a game at Cameron, did you act like a usual student, or is this a shirt-off environment for you, or were you like a normal person at the game? So, the only games that I went to were on the, uh, like, the college visits, so I kind of had to, uh, act nice. I guess, play it professional. Uh, yeah. You know, can't go in there waving the shirt around or anything like that, but if I was a student there, you know, I'd probably got after it in there with the rest of them. I'm talking about. So, Evan, we have a famous basketball player here in Dallas, Luka Doncic, who wears number 77. And I can remember at the time when he chose 77, because I believe he was number seven, and that was already taken, so he just doubled it up. Right now in spring training, you're 87. I can't tell you a Major League Baseball player who's ever <laughs> worn number 87. Is there any chance when you make it to the Major Leagues, you're like, I want that spring training number 87 in center field? <laughs> Listen, I, I've actually joked about it with some people just saying like, hey, like I'm going to I'm going to end up keeping this, you know, and I mean, I might, you know, I feel like a dang, I'm a wide receiver out there or something to tie it in. But listen, I if <laughs> it, that'd be some memories going back, you know, first big league camp, that's what I wore. So, you know, we'll we'll see for sure. It's definitely on. It's definitely I mean, something I've actually thought about before. You wouldn't share the number literally with anybody like if yeah, they'd be you know, they'd be like, oh, yeah, 87 on the White Sox is this or 87 <laughs> on the Angels. Be like, no, 87 is Evan Carter. Everybody knows. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That'd be really cool. <laughs> then there's never going to be a trade where somebody's going to be like, hey, I really need your number. And you're like, no, you don't. Oh, no, there's fine. plenty of other numbers. You to use. <laughs> So that's right. Yeah, multiple people are stoked about your classic rock takes. Yes, I can tell they're very nice excited on our fan text. I was curious since we were talking about your swing. A few people on our fan text have asked, "Does that translate to a good golf swing?" And do you like golf? So I I love golf. Um, I, I I wish I had time to play more, um, but you know, after long games or whatever, you know, sometimes you just want to go home and chill. But on the days that I do have some energy, I'll, I'll definitely go out and play. And I, I, I don't wouldn't call myself good. I mean, I'll probably shoot in the low 80s or so. Um, but, but that's man, not I, good. I really that sounds play. pretty good. Like you say, you well, can listen, barely crack people 80. here that are going to shoot par, and I'm just not on that level. Oh, yeah. Would you? Do you call those guys pitchers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep. <laughs> pitchers are better golfers. They got all that time between starts. Would you rather go golfing or off roading? Oh, man. It depends on where I'm at. If I'm here, I'd rather go off-roading just because you can literally pull off the road anywhere and there's trails to go up in the mountains. So if I was here, I'd probably rather play or rather go off-roading. But somewhere that didn't have it, I would, I would go play golf for sure. So my other question about you is I do have quite a bit of your baseball cards. He has a lot of your cards. Yeah, you single-handedly drove the market <laughs> okay. up on his baseball cards. I've been a big Evan Carter fan for a, a couple years now, and I'm glad that you, you were healthy last year and played great. I was wondering, as you're signing all those Bowman and Bowman Chrome cards in 2020, do you keep some for yourself or do you send them all back to Tops? So I don't I don't get to keep any of the uh, numbered ones, but you know they'll give me some plain ones to keep. And then my mom is also one of the ones that's probably driving the price up on uh, eBay. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's me and your mom that are bidding against each other. So when your mom loses a card, it's to me probably. That's that may be true. Yeah, <laughs> that is fantastic. I hope we get to meet your family, and yes. they're really happy to meet Mike. Except for your mom is like, mm -mm. I know who you yeah. are. 
on eBay. I know exactly who you are. Now, Mike just asked you that question to set up that eventually he's going to break all media rules and ask for an autographed baseball for one of his kids. I'm just telling you now, don't be surprised when it happens. We're not supposed to talk about that on air, Kevin. Oh, yeah. then it definitely won't happen at some point. Well, we appreciate it very much. I know everyone in the Metroplex is so glad to hear you outside of the field. So thank you very much for jumping on with us, good sir. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate y'all having me.